Thanks, Tyler, here at the Kalahari High School event, checking with 5069Z, Control Z coming out of Nebraska. A couple tournament wins, a couple skills champions, and an excellence award to 5069. I've had a chance to see them a couple signature events, and we've had our eyes on them for a long time. Take a look at this rollout. This might be one of the quickest shooters that I have seen out on the field. Tons of improvements throughout this whole thing. We're going to be talking about uh, anti-funnels, uh, almost locking wings. We'll figure out what that means, and so much more coming up with this robot. Let's learn more about them coming up here on Pits and Parks. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Hartman, we got to start out with, uh, I think, the big star of this robot here is you have a, a really tall uh, catapult and arm as it goes up, and it is ridiculously fast as well, too. So let's showcase it off. Talk to me about it. And then, uh, you know, I've noticed I've seen a couple of signature events. You just keep getting quicker and quicker. So talk to me about that process. Yeah, so uh, from the start of the season, our initial strategy was always to just get tri balls over as fast as we could. So recently, we've been able to uh, upgrade our shooter, which now runs off of two, one and a half motors and is able to shoot 150 tri balls per minute. Wow. So we're able to match load uh, tri balls extremely fast, more than, faster than most other teams. And uh, our, with our strategy, we match load about six to eight tri balls at a time. And we can do that in about two seconds. So we're able to get tri balls onto the field and scored really quickly. So uh, it, we also are able to go up and shoot over pretty much any blocker uh, that isn't ridiculously tall. So, I uh, just want to shoot it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this is about 25 inches, I think we were talking about. Yeah, uh, about 25 for that. inches. Yeah. So when I notice you're shooting, I, I mean, I know we're not quite on level ground, but you do kind of shake just a little bit. Do you have any ways that you compensate either for skills matches or for the competition field, or is it just pretty accurate enough as is? Um, it's pretty accurate enough, but we do use rubber bands to like kind of hold it down sure. a little bit. So. Um, it's it's accurate enough. The shaking doesn't really affect it too much, so we're able to be consistent. And I also, you got six pneumatic pistons uh, on there as well too. How many fires are you able to get like in a match typically of, of having that race up? So we only actually use two pistons to raise it up during a match. Gotcha. So and then when we go to climb, we actually use all six to pull it down, and uh, all of that comes from this one tank. So we're able to have a separate tank we have enough air to climb at the end of the match every time. Well, I think it's a great segue for Braden to talk about that uh, C-tier climb uh, as well, too. So let's let's go into that. Uh, you know, on, on the field-wise, getting that C-tier is so important, getting you that extra few points on it. When did you implement that? And uh, talk to me more about the composition of it. Yeah, so the C-tier climb that we've been implementing has all come in the last week. So two weeks ago, we had one tournament. We were kind of rushed at the end to get the robot ready. We couldn't quite get the C-tier time finished and uh, C-tier climb finished in time. Uh, but with this robot, we finally got it done. We've spent the last uh, week and a half just almost focused entirely on it. And as Hartman said, we have the six pistons, which gives it a ton of pressure to pull down. Because our robots, it's not super heavy, but it's got some weight to it. So it takes a lot of force to get it up. And then along with that, I'm going to flip the robot to the back here, is we have what we call our climb boost. So this is activated by one piston, and it provides a bunch of uh, force through these two gears. It'll activate this lock out and then it'll uh, help pull the robot a little bit higher as is like that. So that helps get us up to the C tier. Every once in a while to get stuck in B tier and we have to shoot the catapult a couple times, which looks a little bit funny, but that just overcomes the static friction and helps it to just kind of jump up into the C tier. I was going to ask you about that because your last match, I heard you say fire the catapult as it was going. I'm like, why, why would you do that? So interesting to hear with that. And it's just these little standoffs right here going on, right? Yep, so those two standoffs are what grab it. We start uh, with the bar below the standoffs and that uh, gives it a little bit more me momentum going up because it has more torque being closer to the axis of rotation. And then uh, as it goes up, it'll slip onto in between these two standoffs, which will, is the perfect balancing point for the robot to be perfectly horizontal in C2. So your team has a couple, uh, let's say, new terminology that I've heard here, uh, starting out with the anti-funnel. Uh, so Bryce, talk to me more about uh, what that is on your robot. Uh, what are you actually doing and looking to accomplish with it? Yeah, so the anti-funnel, 
on the front of the bot here. Uh, you see most teams with their sleds go over the barrier on the outside with their standoffs that slope in, the funnel towards their intake. We actually funneled the opposite direction at Haunted and at Speedway. Um, we had sleds that were on both sides to let us go over the bar, but we noticed that when we'd run into tri balls, uh, we weren't able to cross over and we just kind of get stuck or we'd turn our robot and we wanted to kind of get rid of that. Um, we thought about doing just a regular funnel so that way we had a thinner point of contact with the bar so that way if we did hit a tri ball, we'd go to one side. Um, but we also were worried about the possession rules with the can only have one in the um, intake. And so we funnel away from the intake and actually towards our wings to uh, push them over. Speaking of uh, wings, by the way, we have a, uh, once again, new uh, phrases that I've heard of this. Uh, intentionally almost locking wings. Uh, so, I mean, we've heard a lot about locking wings. Why is it intentionally almost uh, locking Nathan on your robot? Right, so I'll go into that a little bit. So, um, so you know, a lot of teams have locking wings. So once the uh, pistons are able to fully extend, they're fully locking, so they're not able to be pushed back at all until the piston releases. Um, but we actually found one flaw with that design, is that if you hit something, say the short barrier, or maybe you're trying to go, go past the goal, um, your robot will come to a complete stop. It'll just, you know, hard break, you'll be stuck, stuck where you are. So we actually have the intentionally almost locking wings, which allows us to, um, if we hit something hard enough, it's, we're still able to bend the wings back um, so we're able to go through the, a little bit of a tighter space. So they take very little pressure to be extended out. Um, yeah, so we actually have a pressure regulator um, that does that. So it only takes a very little amount of pressure to extend them out. But once they're out, because they are nearly locking, they still have tons of strength. So yeah, that is better than uh, no lock at all. So yeah. So you get essentially the benefits of a locking wing, but a little bit more compliance with it, right? To, right, to exactly. To bear with what you're doing. That's really cool. So, well, 5069Z, thank you so much for telling us more about your team and your robot. Uh, like I said, we've been uh, had our eyes on you for the last couple of signature events. We're glad we were able to get in here, and you're looking really good here at Kalahari. So good luck at this event and throughout the rest of the season. Thanks a lot, guys. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.